Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here. You know, in today's age, you can't just have boring photos on your property marketing listings. You've got to have a virtual walkthrough tour. That way tenants can quickly qualify themselves and look through the property even at two in the morning online. But I can hear you say, look, Darren, it's too expensive with cameras and takes too long. That's why you've got to go to virtualtourscreator.com.au and check out how you can do walkthrough virtual tours using your mobile phone. Go and check it out. Also, talk to Tom there at virtualtourscreator.com.au on how you can quickly turn your tours into really cheap floor plans as well. Take care. Hi everyone, Dennis Yusuf here and I have got Darren Hunter with me today and we are from IGT and this is the BDM podcast. It's a, Dennis, it's the BDM coach podcast. That's why, that's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hang on a minute. I know, for everyone's benefit out there, we do four <laughs> podcast shows and generally the BDM coach, I'm not part of it. Um, I'm no. the guy in the background that's, uh, all right, Dennis, this is the topic we're going to do today on the on the. <laughs> The controller behind the button. Well, it's interesting because, like, you, you rang me up and and you said, Dennis, time to do a podcast. You guys are about to travel, blah, blah, blah. I need to get them under the belt. What's the pain point? And I went, Darren, pain point is around you. Like, you are the pain point. Darren, I'm not like, a painful person. <laughs> and that what was, are you that, saying, Dennis? Similar, similar response. I said, mate, they need scripts and dialogues. Like, All one right. of the most, biggest common things, Darren, and we, we could talk about negotiating before we get into it, this, that, and the other. But so many people are ringing me up or there's so much banter in the IGT inner circle, uh, which if nobody's part of their IGT inner circle, go to Facebook, go to um, Inspired Growth Training, click join the group, community, make sure you answer the questions or um, you won't get in. Simple questions so we know you're a real estate agent. But there's a lot of banter in, in the group and, our, and other groups where people are saying there's a lot of new agencies coming through and offering cheap fees. Now, yeah. I'm not just talking about these online only ones. There's new startup businesses yeah. who think they're doing the world but what, to offering cheap what, fees. What they're, they've they're, they're deluded, all right? And the delusion is, with no disrespect to startup businesses, you've got to get the break even really quick, right? But it's the illusion that if you're cheap, you're going to grow faster. It, it's not true. And I remember, Dennis, I had a phone call from an agent in Wellington mm -hmm. who started from scratch. She was at six properties and she said, Darren, because she knows I'm the fee expert, she said, Darren, I know you're going to hate what I'm about to say, but I've done my fees deliberately cheap so I can grow fast. And after I did a little bit of mindset coaching with her, um, and like I just said, do you think you're better than the average sales agency down the road that does property management on the side with a boss that doesn't care about property management? He just focuses on sales. The property manager is just, just putting out bushfires and all that sort of thing. Do you feel that you're better than that average type agency down the road? And she said, hell yeah. And I said, well, if you feel you're better then, why do you feel that you need to either, one, be cheaper than them or even the same, the same with your fees? Interesting, isn't it? She got the point. And so we made her just short of being the most expensive agent in Wellington. Um, and she was just signing them up. The growth rate or the speed that she was signing up properties didn't slow down. And Dennis... She just came to me so surprised, like, oh, my goodness me. And I said, well, the whole thing is, is that you need to be at $3,000 a year per property at least, all right? Yep. Because when you get to 30 properties and you're nearly at 100 grand in revenue, it's going to mean a lot for you when you, when you need to, you know, be thinking about when you're going to employ another person. Anyway, so at that point, the, the, the growth rates weren't slowing down. I said, well, let's go to the next level then. And so we made her the most expensive fee charging agent in Wellington, New Zealand, um, and her growth rate still didn't slow down. And so she was doing that $3,000 plus per property. Um, and uh, yeah, so moving on, you know, about negotiation and you don't, if you're starting up or you're small numbers, you don't have to be the cheapest in town. Um, you, 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 we'll talk about that. We're going to dissect yeah, yeah. that. But I, I, I guess, Dennis, we're going to just mention that, that, that discounting is such a massive issue out there, Dennis. 
And, you know, one of the, the, well, the biggest pain point in property management, any boss will say is a lack of leads, a lack of new business. All righty. And so you've come out with your book, The PM Lead Secrets. Yep. All right. And there's 40 different ways to grow your rent, Ron. If you haven't got that book, go and get it, please. Um, it's, a, it's, the, it's the most detailed rent roll growth textbook that's ever been written on how to generate your own leads without having to rely on sales, salespeople. Just go to pmleadsecrets.com. Now, my book is going to be printed um, at this stage in four weeks' time. It's going to be out there. We've already sold several hundred copies or we'll placed several hundred copies. And um, the PM fee script secrets, it's the answer to discounting. It is the most comprehensive textbook on how to deal with discounting. It's got over 50 different uh, 50 script, fee scripts in it on how to respond effectively to owners around discounting on individual fees, on management fees and so forth. There's 34 different fees charged across Australia, New Zealand, United States. It's fees and fee packages. Um, and that's pmfeesecrets.com. So, um, you know, people might think, oh, Darren, you're pushing your book. You need to get the book. Oh, look, if you ever have an issue of discounting, you've got to get the book. If you ever have an issue of growth, you've got to get Dennis's book. Just don't worry about it. And look, we're actually giving you the book for free. you just got to pay shipping. So it's not a bad deal. We lose money. If people just, just pay for the shipping, we're actually losing money. We want to get this into your hands. So, Dennis, I know I've hijacked your session so far, but um, over to no, you. No, no, it, it's all right because it, it really is important that people – um, understand and not be fearful of um, cheaper agents. It's about the, you know, this whole podcast is going to be built around why, you know, you have to negotiate because you obviously have to negotiate because there's always going to be something cheaper coming through, right? Mm-hmm. You know, can you imagine what, um, you know, Volvo, BMW, Porsche and all that would think if, you know, if they had that fear of, oh my goodness, there's these cheap vehicles coming in the market for a tenth of the price. They don't care. They know their point of difference. They know their self-worth. They know what their vehicle can produce, what they can provide. And those sales agents, they know how to upsell you, right? And and we've got to do the same thing as property managers, as BDMs or whatever we are in the industry. You have to be, you have to know your self-worth. And that's what a lot of our scripts is all about. A lot of our coaching is about being top of mind being the best in your marketplace and teaching your work just like you did with that agent in Wellington. Mm. You basically changed their mindset from do you think you're better than the sales agent that is offering property management? Well, of course I do. So why are you offering cheaper fees than them? That's just self-worth training. It's an aspect of self. It's a small snippet of it. So scripts and dialogues is us teaching people, educating them to give them their worth, to show them that they are better, to, to give them that ammunition. You know, you've got to be like a tank with different different weapons on the tank. You don't use them all at once because you're just going to like, the poor owners are going to be like bees in a headlight. You mm. just use what you've got to use. And that's a, the important thing about having different scripts. You know, Darren, when I first started BDM Coach over nine years ago, Right, when I started BDM Coach, one of the first things I did... Hang on, Dennis. Does that mean that this is your podcast show, BDM Coach? (laughs) (laughs) It's just coincidentally the same name. It is, it is. But BDM Coach, you know, back in 2013 with my first client, I used to get them to ring 10 of their rivals. used to get them to ring their rivals and they would document how long it took to get replied, this and the other. I mean... Coincidentally, we actually offer that as a service, you know, with IGT, the secret shopper files, you know, and we've got a podcast on that. But because it's important, because when you do your homework on your rivals, you know, you all of a sudden gain worth and that adds ammunition for you for your scripts and dialogues. How do you know what your points of differences are, Darren, if you don't know what your rivals are doing? Correct. You've got to know what your rivals are doing and you need to have strong points of difference that are relative or mean something to the prospect. So, mm. the, and what the prospect really cares about is best rent, best tenant in the fastest possible time. So if you're coming in and bragging about how you've got 12 wonderful monthly statements that are printed on plated gold that you will courier out to them once a month, um, it, 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 like who cares, you know? And so, Dennis, we know through the secret shopper files when the secret shopper called agencies and asked them, "Hey, look, how are you different from your competitors down the road? You know, what's your point of difference?" What were some of the lame answers we got? It was, 
we offer better customer service, so they couldn't explain it, what it was in any meaningful way. Um, it was, you know, we've got three staff here who manage on average 70 properties each. And that sounds great, but the average prospect doesn't understand the significance no, of that. We have a combined um, experience of 132 years. Yeah. But it wasn't telling us if it was good years or bad years or, you know. Well, or, we even had one where, oh, the principal of the office is has won such and such an award. And it's like, who gives? It it's, means nothing because it's just noise. If it's not relating to their pain, their need. And right now they likely want best rent, best tenant in the fastest possible time. If it appeals directly into that desire, then it's going to be something that's going to magnetize them to you and make you as the standout favorite. So and that, that's a separate thing. I, 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 um, you know, in our membership, Dennis, we've got to talk about the IGT exclusive membership in the, in the, in the uh, Grow Influence Dominate series. We've got a whole um, hour over an hour of just points of difference plus other sessions as well but it's all in there we haven't got time to get into that today but I just want to start off Dennis before you start firing the big scripts at me mm -hmm. um, and we're going to go through those uh, I want to get everyone to understand why the owners want to negotiate because that same owner that wants to negotiate with you is the same owner that goes down to, to, to McDonald's and asks for a Big Mac but doesn't ask for a discount or they go to Target and buy a pair of jeans, uh, and they don't ask for a discount. So why are they asking you for a discount? And so you are, you're going to understand is that there are certain things that people know that they can they can negotiate in. So if you're going to go for me, Facebook Marketplace, and go and buy something, a big ticket item, mm -hmm. I'm ready to negotiate because you you got to ask to be in it to win it, right? Yeah. And it's a thrill. You love it. You enjoy it. You go to you get on a plane. You go to Bali. You land in Bali. You're in negotiation mode. You're in bargaining mode. You, and, and, and so, uh, you know, just like using that analogy, real estate is negotiation time. It's let's do a deal because I don't get to do this too often. And or uh, uh, the analogy is let's dance. And so you need to understand or let's play a game of tennis. And I'm going to hit the ball at you. Or I'm going to throw an objection at you just to see if I can win because I want the thrill of the deal. Mm. And so... Everybody, don't be offended when someone asks for a discount. They're just going to try. It's how you respond. It's how you respond effectively with confidence and you really believe in your fees with a reasonable response. It gets it over the line. So understand you're in real estate. Negotiation to them is fun. Don't take it hard. Learn your stuff. Learn, learn your scripts. Please get my book, The PM Fee Script Secrets, um, and it's going to, going to really help you. But Dennis... Far away. Um, we've got the the we've got the biggest fee objections. Yep. Um, that I've got my list here, Darren. That yep. I'm that I'm gonna like these. These are common things. I mean, I'm speaking with hundreds of agents a month, as you are, and you know, um, and I, obviously I've been monitoring the groups and what people are saying. But just on that negotiation, you know, we've become such a society of expectation that we can get it cheaper. You know, Bingley Electrical, Harvey Normans. You know, all these stores, even uh, Bunnings, you, you know, if you find it cheaper somewhere else, we'll match the price. So the society has become about fee mongering as well, you know, price dropping or matching and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's, as long as you've got your armour up and you understand your worth, and, and that's the whole key of this podcast and your book and so much other stuff, to show the people, it's about showing them that you are worth it. You are not Bunnings. You are not the cheap hardware store you are not the cheap electrical store you are the best and and that's what we're going to do so let's let while we're talking about cheap right and i'm not saying that they're all cheap you know <laughs> i love going to bunnings and getting my my sausage roll my my um <laughs> it's, it's Sausage, sausage sizzle. Sausage sizzle with a piece of bread yep. and sauce and your onion. That's a the, real the stale bread with my onion on it yeah, and then it gets all over us, you it's know. Australian thing. I don't know. I don't know if it happens in America, but you go to a hardware store and you get your sausage on bread. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So there's Darren, there's cheap agents coming into my marketplace. Yeah. You know, I've got cheap agents. I've got a, I've got a, an online agency saying they'll do everything for me and there's cheap agencies out there and I don't know what to do. Okay. Well, firstly, um, 
and I wasn't ready for that because it's not in our list, Dennis. But my response oh, to that, there was wow. there's, let's, there's, let's right. see how good Mr. All right, Hunter so is. here is a story. And this story was given by Martin Grunstein. It's in the book. Uh, Martin Grunstein um, was a speaker at a conference that I was at, and you may even recall the conference, Dennis, some years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave a story about a hairdresser in a little country town that he was the only hairdresser in the town. Um, he'd owned the market for 20 years. He was charging $25 haircuts. Suddenly, um, a competitor comes in after 20 years and sets up doing $6 haircuts. And this guy was pondering his future, like, oh, my goodness me, this is really going to really be bad for business. What do I do? And he thought, well, I could possibly go and match him. I've got more money in the bank. Uh, I could match him at $6 until he goes broke, run him out of town, and then I'll put my prices back up again. And he thought, no, it, that, that's not a good idea. So instead, he puts up a sign in the window and he says, we fix $6 haircuts and kept it at the same price. And that's the point here, Dennis, is that when you're in a marketplace and new competitors come in, this is what they do. They, they don't just sit down in the back of the room and go, la, 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 what's my fee structure going to be? Oh, I know, I'll get to do this, 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 this. No, no, it's got a lot more consideration than that. They go to the marketplace. They do secret shopping, Dennis. They call up agents, seeing what fees they're charging. And in their mind, they think, well, for example, Agent A down the road, the blue brand, um, I know they're better than what we do. They've been around a long time. They know their staff. They're very well known. They seem to have a really good quality level of service. I don't think I'm as good as them. So therefore, they price themselves a bit cheaper than Agent A. And then look further down the road and they see Agent D. And Agent D is a little bit rough around the edges. The reputation is not the best. They seem, you know, heard they're a bit shonky. And so in their mind, with their fee structure, they think, well, I'm actually better than them. So they price themselves higher than Agent D, but lower than Agent A. On their perception of what they think their, their services are worth compared to other agents in the market. And so an agency's fee structure is largely based on someone's opinion of what they think they are worth. So... If you're up against a lot of cheaper agents, it's not that they don't know what your fees are. They know what your fees are. And despite knowing that, they're still cheaper because they don't believe they are as good as you. And when you understand that principle, you take that to heart. And when an owner does say, but the other agent is cheaper, now you understand the concept. You can just explain to him and give him the revelation, like I've just given you that aha, epiphany moment revelation um, about what a person saying they're cheaper, what that statement is actually saying. Mm. And what's stopping someone for having a sign or doing a social media post on saying we fix? The, the cheap fees or the cheap agents. Yeah, well, that's it. And I, I've done the I've done the sign, mm. and um, I, I guess uh, you know we fix cheap fees, but the word fix and fee can be misconstrued. So we repair cheap, you know, cheap fee agents. So something like that. But yeah, absolutely. You know, um, there, there's a there's a certainly a marketing message in that. But we have got to take it to heart. The cheaper agent is cheaper for a reason, everybody, because that's what they believe they're worth. Mm. And they know what you're charging. It's not like they're dumb. They know. They've already secret chopped you. Someone's That's already right. done they've, it. They've done their homework. They know that what level they're, they're where they're coming in at in the market. Yeah. But they still decide to obviously, you know, work with that, right? Yep. And I'm going to throw yep. something else in, Dennis. I honestly don't believe, and I'm not aware of any agents out there that know they're really, really good. And despite knowing that they're really, really good, price themselves cheaper below what they believe they're worth. Yeah, I don't think there is such a thing. People always charge at what they think they can get. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in that, right, so sometimes, you know, you don't find out what other agents have come into the market until you've gone into somebody's home, Darren, and you might be carrying out a presentation, doing your pitch, thinking everything's going really well. You sit them down, you go through the, the fees, and, and then they turn around and say, hey, great, we think you're fantastic, it, it's great, but... You know, we've had another agent come through before you. Will you match their fees? We like what you've got, but will you match the fees of the other agency? Okay. Well, firstly, um, this is a compliment, Dennis, because they're obviously want you. 
Mm-hmm. They're actually saying in their mind, this is the self-talk mm-hmm. that's going through their mind that's produced this verbal statement, all righty? And the self-talk in their mind, the chitter chatter in their mind right now is, I like you. I think you're better than the other agent. But I'm in this for the deal because today is real estate negotiation day and I just want to feel great. So to do that, uh, I want you, I want your service. I like you, I want you, I trust you. But the other agent, I don't want to go with them, but they're cheaper than you. So if I can have you and your service and have their fees, I can now have my cake and eat it too. And I'm going to sleep soundly tonight knowing that I have won won the day. So this is what they're thinking. So with that in mind, we've got to come to them with that. Hey, look, Mr. Smith, I can see that you wish to use us. Thank you. Uh, obviously, we're, you know, um, we're, we're, we're the, the most trusted agent for you right now. So if that's the case, do we just need to agree on price to get this over the line? And so from that point, let's just with them identify. And this is actually, Dennis, this is secret 17 in the book. So for everyone out there, the scripts start on management fee scripts. Remember, we've got 51 in all, but the, the, the fee scripts start at secret number 17. So this is actually secret number 17 called the cup of coffee script. What we need to understand out there, everybody, is that you need to know what your other agents are charging. So if they've said if you can match your fee, well, they need to tell you what that fee is. Let's say, for example, you're 8% and they're at 7%. That's a 1% difference. Well, what's the rent? So you know, is it in Australia, New Zealand, we commonly use weekly rent. The United States talk about monthly rent. So let's say the monthly rent is $1,200 a month. Well, what's 1% of that? It's 12 bucks, right? But if it's weekly rent of $500, well, what's 1% of that? It's five bucks. So what does $5? So we've got to convert it from management fee difference, 1%. What is it? Five bucks. Mm-hmm. $12. And then we turn it, convert it into an everyday consumable product that that prospect is likely using, hopefully on a daily basis. So that when it gets down to cups of coffee and bottles of water and all those sorts of things that people consume without blinking. And so the cup of coffee, you know, you're not going to get a good cup of coffee now for five bucks. Mm. You know, Mr. Smith, um, did you know that to get us, the difference between us and that cheaper agent is actually, it's less than a cup of coffee a week. Did you know that? And here is the truth, Dennis. Most property managers suck at math. They do. So that's just been a revelation for a lot of people in listening to this. And it's also a revelation for your prospects too. And a lot of people, suddenly you've diffused the bomb. Then it, mm-hmm. oh, I, I kept 1%. I didn't realize it was so low. And now you're getting it over the line. Well, you know, Mr. Smith, we actually think that we're worth more than a cup of coffee. I'm hoping with the points of difference and things we've shown you, whether it's a virtual tour or using a handbook or all those sorts of things, whatever points of difference you got, we're worth more than that cup of coffee. And if you still don't think, hey, I'm, I'm happy for you to drive down once a week and I'll buy you a cup of coffee. <laughs> As a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just get humorous. But that's the point is that, you know, what is that 1%? And so you're... Um, making it sound ridiculous. You're, you're just reducing it down to a common denominator just to show them what the difference really is. And here is the truth, Dennis. When it comes to discounting, most owners just focus mainly on the management fee. And when it's a focus on the management fee, it's usually a 1% discount. Not, you know, there is 2%, but it's usually 1%. Mm-hmm. So you just got to know some basic maths, know your monthly rent, know your weekly rent, and turn it into a consumable product. Yeah, and Darren, it, it's a game, you know, like I like what you said at the beginning and another way of saying it, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, if you lined up all of the, you know, agencies that you had, you know, come here and you were to base your decision on on what services that are being provided and take out the equation of the fee, you know, if they're not picking you, you haven't sold your services to them. Yeah. Yeah, you and know, this is where you've got to have your points of difference mm-hmm. really strong. And, and look, you, you really need to get Dennis's book, the pmleadsecrets.com. Uh, just go there. The book is free, just pay shipping. But Dennis does outline all those effective points of difference, you know, um, getting to the inquiry first, you know, yeah. really fast. The SMS video text um, using proof statements. And there's, there's a whole pile in there. You've just got to be the standout favorite, you know, for them to... Uh, to, to trust you the most, because at the end of the day, Dennis, here's the set, here's the true fact. The, the, get down to the wire. Mm. 
the agent, the, the prospect signs up with who they trust the most. If the agent they trust the most is cheaper, they didn't go with them because they're cheaper. They went because of trust. Mm. And, and uh, the, the idea is to gain their trust prior to the property. You shouldn't be, you know, um, bantering on about fees and bantering on about wider users when you're at the property. The idea is to win them over before there. They don't just let strangers into a house. Mm. You know, so you've got to get their trust as early as you can. So, Darren, obviously discounting is still a big thing. And, and I want to bring up another scenario, if that's okay. And it's still, it's similar. And I, I know that the scripts that you've said already that you're bringing up is going to help. But I'm trying to get different angles that then people can have their own emotional, you know, example through it, you know. So what about if someone just said you're too expensive? Well, that's also um, your fees are too high. And we cover yeah. that in secret number 19 in the book. So, um, you know, your fees are too high, your fees are too expensive. Um, you know, at the end of the day, compared to what? You know, what are they actually comparing you to? See, some people don't have a real idea about what fees are being charged generally in the market. And it could have been something they heard from the lady down at the laundromat or the butcher, you know, some years ago, and they got some misconstrued thing in their head. Um, you know, it's, so it's a bit like Teams by Design, you know, um, getting a call and people think that, um, you know, I, I need to get a virtual assistant and suddenly they, they, they you know, the, the, you're not going to get an assistant, virtual assistant for $2 an hour. It's just, it's a price in their head that they're misconstrued and got the wrong idea. So what I'm saying, if they're saying you're too expensive or, you, or your fees are too expensive, or your fees are too high, are mm. they coming in at that angle? not fully appreciating what management fees are. Now, um, I, I guess in this particular case, the answer would be, look, Mr. Smith, compared to who, we know our fees are very, very competitive um, uh, with the level of service that we charge. We also know there are other agents out there that charge cheaper and they're cheaper you know, for a reason. Mm. Um, uh, however, um, so I've just lost my track of thought there just for a second. Sorry, over to you, mate. Sorry, I just yes, lost no, no, you're right. I just rolled there, and I just lost it. I'll come back. <laughs> yeah, but and and this is why it is really important to understand and know why what your rivals are doing. You need to know who they're asking for cheaper fees. Yep. You so, know, when you know your points of difference, you know what your proof yep. statements are. You yep. can show them that you're an agency about um, saving them money for using you versus paying a cheaper fee. Yeah, correct. So the angle I was going to come in at is that really at this point, if they're, you need to educate them and you need to have stories, everybody. You need to have stories. Stories overcome objections. So look, Mr. Smith, I don't know how well you know fees in the marketplace. We're working. We, we know what they are. And we know that we're very well priced for what we provide. Um, I, I remember an owner I, I, I serviced a couple of years ago. He wanted to get a cheaper agent. He wanted to feel good, have a, you know, save some money at the front end. But um, he had like four different property managers in a year. The agency really didn't care about property management. They just focused on sales. Mm. Um, the routine inspections weren't done right. Things were missed and it costed owner thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and so everyone, you need to have your own stories, stories that you know and you believe in are true. And so it's not going to take you long out there in the marketplace to come up with some horror stories. So yeah, this, and I, I know. Uh, the, the cheap agents this is what i've heard this is what i know and mm. the owner saved a, a, a maybe a couple of hundred bucks but it cost them thousands of dollars yep. we save you that yeah, in fact well. we're 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 an agency that repairs or fixes cheap fee service you know i've got another scenario that i haven't spoken to you about so i'm going to throw you oh, on another that. surprise another surprise i mean you know it goes to show our level of, of of um, training and help you, you know, someone rings you up, Darren, and, and they're talking to you and they say, you know, I appreciate that you've gone through your fees, but my dad's got a property through you and he's paying X percent. That's a tricky situation, right? It is. Well, it is. And that's a tough yeah. one because if you've gone and lowered the bar with one person, the other person mm. is, um, um, is is expecting this. So, Dennis, that's a hard one because, you know, you're already set. You can say, well, look, you know, we do need to charge, um, you know, uh, a couple more. Your dad maybe has also brought in other business as well. Are you intending to bring in other business? 
Otherwise, yep. we can give you a special rate in that regard there. But look, once you set a precedent, Dennis, and start lowering your fees, um, and as another person comes along like that, um, you know, this is a, it, it's no different from a multiple property owner with 10 properties where you've got a multiple person group with mum, dad, uncle, auntie, you know, cousin, six cousin removed and all this stuff coming in, you know, um, as a group, it's no different. So you just got to be careful, I think, around, um, you know, that. And, and and I don't know, Dennis, have you got a, a good comeback? Well, I, I do. And uh, one good factor that, you know, thing that you can put in place here is, you know, uh, obviously, yep, look, I totally understand that the fee structure that your dad's on. Um, your dad signed with us seven years ago. We didn't have all of the online programs we didn't have technology all of these extra um, things that are put in place and we are um, now looking at increasing those fees so this is the fee structure that your dad's going to be moving to um, or you know um, that's what i'd move the conversation to but i'd certainly be still saying what you said as well you know um, yep looked at your dad's file you should know that it's a son or daughter or whatever that's coming in right um, so you need to look at their structure and be prepared for these things you yeah. know, and also say that, hey, just want to let you know, Dad's referred X amount of properties. Tell you what, I'll put in the special agreement that we will give you um, once we've got that 10th property over the line, yeah. you know, um, yeah. and stuff. You have those things in place. So, Darren, one more. I'm going to throw another one at you because when a salesperson sells a property, Darren, they're always over-exaggerating something. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking generalised. We're joking about it. It doesn't happen all the time. But that sales agent told me that I would get $1,000 a week. You're telling me I'm only going to get $850. All right. And what what agency does that salesperson work for? I'm going to be a real pain in the butt here, and I'm going to say they work for your agency. <laughs> well, in all due respect, Mr. Smith, and I'll go and have a word with Joe. Uh, but, uh, you know, Joe works in the sales market. I work in the property management market. Um, and uh, he was probably referring to, this, to, the, to the rental boom that was there over a year ago. Not really, things are tightened up a bit. But what's really important, we've got to get your property rented quickly. Uh, and we don't set the rent. It's the market that dictates the rent. And, uh, you know, for every week your property is vacant, it's going to cost you 2%. So we've got to make sure it's priced right because if it's vacant five weeks or four weeks because we're hanging out for a very, very strong price, then that could cost you 10% if it's vacant five weeks. And that's more expensive than the management fee I'm going to charge you over a year. So that's why we've got to get a price quickly and priced right. And I'll go and have a chat to Joe about that too. Yeah, well said. You know, it's it's something that did happen to me quite often. And that's another script that I wasn't ready for, Dennis. I know, but that's and, okay. And here's my point, everybody. I wasn't ready for that. And mm. I created that script as I went. You did. You I did. did. Well, I created you know it stuff. as I went. I'm under pressure. I created it. Yeah. And, um, and there's a response to every objection out there, people. You've just got to sit down and work out a reasonable explanation. But at the end of the day, if they see that you believe it and you see it in your eyes, you see it in your body language, in your, in your tone, your conviction, that, you, if, that if you believe it, they will believe it too. Yeah. And, 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 and let me add to that, Darren. I want yeah. to add to that because your script was really good. You know, um, Mr. and Ms. Smith totally understand when Joe actually um, had the appraisal done on this property when it was worked out, you can see on the form that th this was dated on. Rental markets change all the time significantly um, according to how many properties are in demand and um, available at one time. So right now, if your property was to be vacant, um, this is the, the price that I'd be marketing it. And, you know, you can do the, look, let's give it a go for a few days. We're not getting any inquiry on it. We're going to have to drop it back to this price. Yeah, and Dennis, I've got my phone here. I'm just about to give Joe a, a quick call because I know he's, <laughs> he's uh, away for the next week, but I need to give him a call and have a quiet, quiet word with him about let me be the property manager and I'll let you be the salesperson. Otherwise, I won't go out and start pricing properties on the sale market for him. <laughs> yeah, and this is why we need to be educating investors out there that they should be speaking with um, BDM's property managers on what the actual rent returns are. Mm. You know, rent, rental markets change just as quick as a sales market. Mm. You know, it's not quicker. So, mm. um, you know, it's really important <laughs> that we educate 
people that they should be speaking with property managers because they know statistics and data of rental properties. Mm. You know? Now, Dennis, I think that we need to, we need to cut this um, podcast and we need to do a part two. Are you it, worried that I'm going to throw on out a script? No, 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 no. It, it, we need to we need to say a quick goodbye, everyone, and make sure you come back to the next episode because I didn't realize this was going to go so long, but. Mm. You know, the podcast, we're going to put it into two parts. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's great discussion, Dennis. I really like it. You're throwing me curlies that I'm not ready for. But this I think is, this, this is what's say. making it good, Darren. It's, 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 it's you know, it's a, it's a great listening. We're covering some really good stuff. So um, just, just finishing hmm. off, everyone, pmfeescriptsecrets.com. Get the book. Um, and uh, like I said we've got over 50, 50 scripts in there plus 34 fees and fee packages charged over Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. That's not just fees, but what agents are charging for them, the minimum amount, the maximum amount, so you can get a bit of an idea. Um, and it's, it's so, so many fees, Dennis, people don't even realise they could be charging. So, um, yeah, all right, well, we'll um, catch up with everyone next time um, and uh, make sure you, you, you get into part two. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Darren, for being on board with the BDM Coach podcast show. All right. Cheers, everyone.